ergonomics. That's kind of an interesting word. That first appeared in 1949. What is ergonomics? What is the definition? It is an applied science concerned with designing and arranging things people use so that the people and things interact most efficiently and safely. Also called human engineering. This was from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. In other words, ergonomics is designing the workplace to fit the worker. The risk factors involved with ergonomics are excessive force, high repetition, awkward posture, physical stress, poor physical condition, vibration, constant vibration if you work on a machine, temperature, cold or too hot, lighting, noise, psychosocial influences like stress and motivation. You should evaluate your work area, your work tasks, your postures and habits within your work tasks. If necessary, you need to modify your work area, improve your posture, stretch your muscles throughout your shift. So if you sit for a while during your shift time, you want to make sure that you get up, move around, stretch a little bit, move your body to make your body looser. It'll be safer when you're performing your chores. Make sure you walk around at least every hour. If you're doing paperwork, make sure that you have proper lighting to prevent eye strain or headaches. Be aware of noise hazards in your facility. Inclement weather. What should you do if inclement weather is approaching? We will do a basic overview on this. I would imagine and hope that your facility has their own policy and procedure regarding this. So you want to make sure that you look up your exact policy. It is important to follow some basic guidelines when inclement weather is approaching. If you believe that this type of weather is coming close and could be severe, you want to make sure that you either watch TV or have a radio on so you can make sure for your area that you are going to be safe or whether or not you need to react. Make sure that your residents or patients are indoors away from windows or doors that could cause harm. Close curtains, shades, or blinds to help prevent any cuts uh, from glass breakage. Move residents or patients definitely to the interior of the building. Continue to reassure the residents or patients until the threat of severe weather is gone. And now we're going to talk about material safety data sheets. What does MSDS stand for? It stands for Material Safety Data Sheet. What is a Material Safety Data Sheet? Let me tell you. About 32 million workers are exposed to one or more chemical hazards in their workplace. There are an estimated 575,000 chemical products in use today, and hundreds more are being manufactured annually. This poses a serious problem for workers who are exposed to these chemicals and to their employers. A material safety data sheet gives us the information pertaining to each hazardous chemical that is in the product. Um, there's eight sections to a material safety data sheet, and the one we're really going to talk about today is section six. That is the section that contains the health hazard data, which includes the routes of entry. It tells you how it can get into your system, such as your eyes, your nose, your skin, if it's hazardous, if you get it on your skin. Health hazards, what kind of illnesses you can get if you come in contact with that chemical. The target organs, that if you swallow it or uh, breathe in the fumes from a particular chemical, it can maybe damage your liver, your lungs, your heart. <clears throat> the carcinogenicity, um, which tells you if it can cause cancer, sign and symptoms of exposure, the medical conditions that can be aggravated. Let's say you have problems with your eyes and you get something in your eyes. It certainly can uh, cause more inflammation and more problems. And exposure 
and emergency first aid procedures. The emergency first aid procedures is probably the most important part of the MSDS sheet for most of you. If someone would spill, drink, inhale, have an incident with any hazardous chemical in your workplace, you want to make sure that you know where the MSDSs are kept and so you can find the book and then you can look at the health hazard portion of that MSDS. Now, all MSDS sheets do not look the same. They have to have the same information on them, but they do not look identical. So you want to look for section six. Um, please ask your employer so you can know and be uh, updated on where your MSDS book is kept. One of the other things I want to add is that if there is an incident, you want to make sure that you do call 911. This uh, MSDS will only give you the basics. We need to have the professionals come and really take over and they can actually prevent more damage from happening. Now we will talk about latex allergy. What is latex allergy? Latex allergies are reactions to natural rubber latex products. These allergic reactions have been on the rise since the late 1980s due to the increased use of latex gloves and more latex in a lot of healthcare products. To prevent the transmission of AIDS, hepatitis B, and other bloodborne diseases, many physicians, nurses, nursing assistants, dentists, and other healthcare workers have been leaving their jobs due to latex allergy. This is mainly due to the increased use of the latex gloves in preventing transmission of infectious diseases. Some healthcare workers exposed to natural rubber latex develop allergic reactions, such as skin redness, hives, or itching. More severe reactions include runny nose, itching eyes, scratching throat, asthma, and possibly collapsing. What types of reactions are caused by latex? Three types of reactions can occur in persons using latex products. Irritant contact dermatitis, allergic contact dermatitis, and the true latex allergy. Let me explain the differences between the three. Irritant contact dermatitis is the most common reaction to latex products and causes dry, itchy, irritated areas on the skin, usually the hands. This reaction, most often seen in people who wear gloves continually at work, is not a true allergy. It is a reaction caused by skin irritation from a variety of sources. It can be caused by glove use, exposure to other workplace products and chemicals, repeated hand washing and drying, incomplete hand drying. You want to make sure you dry your hands completely. Ex